So everyone, I've uh, reached the next phase of the configuration of my Unraid system. So it's actually now almost configured how I want it. So there's just a few things that need changing. So to give you a kind of tour and to highlight the changes that I've made. One of the main things is I've now got two cache drives. So I've got two um, NVMe drives uh, in the cache and they're in a mirrored situ uh, setup. So that's quite nice, that's pretty fast and it's one terabyte and that will run things like my virtual machines and some of the apps and things like that. I did also add in a pass-through drive to my Windows VM. So that's this one here. So that allows the Windows to store additional data on an old 500 gigabyte disk. I did have a little bit of an experiment with uh, a Mac VM but I haven't kept that. I was just really just kind of testing that out. Uh, I don't I have no need for a Mac virtual machine. Um, I've got a couple of Macs that are, although quite old, still work fine for the bits and pieces that I need for for Mac OS, including a couple of laptops. My array size is the same. It's still quite small, and it's slowly filling up as well. So it's just it's quite a bit over half full now. Um, about three terabytes left, which isn't too bad for now. Um, but uh, I will need to upgrade that because uh, I have sort of plans for, for what this system is ultimately going to be used for. Go to the dashboard. Um, so the main things I'm going to use this Unraid system for now because I've kind of got used to how it works and I really like how simple it is to set these things up is databases. So I've got a MyraDB set up, Neo4j Enterprise and a MongoDB. Um, so that's a NoSQL database and Neo4j is a network database. So I can actually use those for some of my work. So I can access uh, the databases through here and use them for kind of uh, data storage and analytics for my actual day job, which is really quite handy. Now to do that though, I will need uh, much higher capacity cache drives eventually and also multiple cache pools. So I'm really looking forward to the, the updated version of Unraid, which supports cache pools. And I need to get hold of some big hard drives. And by big, I mean sort of multiple terabytes, um, probably something in the order of 20 to 30 terabytes minimum, I think, for the work that I've got planned to host on this machine. So with that in mind as well, I upgraded the memory. So I added, well, it's now up to 128 gigabytes. I did try and add 128 to the original 64, but I couldn't get that to work. It didn't matter how, uh, what combination I put it in, um, the machine wouldn't boot with more than four RAM slots occupied. I could have dug around, I think, for a bit longer, and I did wonder if I just needed to reset the CMOS. But to be honest with you, I then, after thinking about it a bit more, I decided that... 128 gigabytes is enough to run these databases effectively and I can reuse that other 64 for another project that I had in mind so uh, which is essentially an upgrade to my uh, workstation daily workstation so I uh, decided just to leave it it seemed to be happy with 128 uh, gigs of spread across four 32 gigabyte modules so if it's happy I'm happy basically the CPU utilization is generally quite low. Um, there's a VM running in the background, which is using a little bit of uh, the performance. It's a Windows one, I think, that's that's live, and a couple of other ones. Um, but when I start using these um, databases, then they're having these multiple cores and a lot of memory really comes into, into play, so that's really quite nice. Um, and I think for the purposes of what I've got in mind, which is essentially to look at GDEL data, I'll do a video on that sometime in the future. It's something that I can use for my research, which I think could be really good. So this is it for now. Um, additions in the future. I'm waiting to get a new NVIDIA card for my uh, normal computer. And then once I've got that, I can put the GPU out of that into here. And then the Windows VM can use that GPU. So it's a 1050 uh, NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, I think, which will be perfectly fine for the VM. And uh, yeah, that'll be it then, really.
um, I'll be you know, just looking to get those those hard drives. So yeah, like I said, um, because to use GDAL data, I'm going to need something like four 12 terabyte hard drives, I think, in a in a separate cache pool. So the new version of Unray should allow you to have multiple cache pools. So I'll have one that does kind of lightweight stuff and runs the VMs that will run off these two M VME drives. And then I'll have a separate cache pool that will be probably four, hopefully 12 terabyte hard drives. And that will run the day spaces. And to be honest, I might even need it bigger than four. And that's another reason to get rid of one of these pass-through drives actually to increase the number of available hard drives in the machine. I did plan this and I've got a eight port SATA uh, expansion card which will run eight, eight drives. So I'm hoping to run perhaps six as the second cache pool for the hard drive, uh, for the day spaces rather. And then I'll add another four, hopefully, so two on the card and two on the motherboard um, to increase the capacity of my array, which to be honest, I don't need to increase too much. Um, so I'll get perhaps another four, four terabyte drives or maybe I'll get four, maybe eight terabyte drives and then switch the parity drive over to one of the bigger ones. So that's it really for now. The system is very stable. I've not had any crashes. Um, I had a little weird network conflict with Windows 10, but that was the only sort of slightly odd bit of behavior that I've had. Um, it's currently been up five days since I upgraded the memory. Um, and yeah, it just works perfectly. No problems at all. A bit of fiddling to get the second cache drive recognized. I had to change some jumpers on the motherboard. I made a quick video about that that I'll put a link below. Uh, it wasn't quite how I was expecting it to be, but no problem. Yeah, so really impressed really with Unraid. I mean, I've been using Linux for a long time. And I think for experienced Linux users, Unraid's even easier because you can just go in, I can SSH in and fiddle about with things if I need to. But to be honest, in terms of a low maintenance way of running a bunch of uh, databases like this, it's perfect. And then you can have a few virtual machines doing bits and pieces as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a really great way of just making a low maintenance um, data storage and database machine as far as, as far as I'm concerned. I've got a media server on there as well, which I use to just serve out some videos. But on my other server, I've got Plex, which I use a little bit more for doing sort of films and TV and stuff like that. So yeah, really impressed. So um, I hope your experiences have been as good and let me know down below and I'll see you in the next one.